Here is my version 1.0 of my PCB, and this is the version that had issues with my lower static RAMs, the addresses being connected but not actually being connected properly over here because of how I forgot to update the net address labels on those pins. And this is my version 2. And so in this version, I've gone ahead and corrected those, uh, those address lines, uh, hopefully correctly. I've gone to an R2R ladder for my resistors for my VGA output and made some other miscellaneous uh, updates, but uh, those are in a previous video that I talked through those. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, this card populated. And then here is that card populated. So uh, pretty much uh, same parts as the last card. There's nothing different other than the resistors as far as components. Uh, I did order up some different RAM though. Uh, the stuff I was using on my last card was some inexpensive AliExpress. It was supposed to be these chips, but I could tell something wasn't right. Uh, they weren't, they weren't uh, working as well as they should have. And so I did just grab some new static RAMs just to make sure that I don't have any issues with RAM. <laughs> Okay, that's all a good sign. Okay, so real quick, a couple things. I'm going to turn this off, and I forgot to turn on power for this Nano. And when that's not powered up, it does affect the bus. So I'm going to go ahead and get that turned on, and you can now see the OLED screen. I'm also going to hook up my VGA capture. When I turn this on, uh, this is going to a VGA splitter, and I did see uh, text that looked pretty clean on my monitor, my LCD monitor. But I want to show you what I'm seeing as I get into this. So to do that, I need to get my capture device on my PC plugged in. So just plugging that in. Okay, so I've started recording on my OBS video capture. So this, again, is going to a splitter, going to my LCD, and also going to my video capture on my PC. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my system back on. Here it's flying through the registers as I do my initial initialization, I guess, of that video memory. And I am looking at the output on my screen. The LCD there, you cannot see anything at all as far as the noise. It looks really good so far. The output on OBS, I see some waviness, but that I think is just noise between here and all the cabling I've got going on to get to a splitter and then to my PC and capture it from there. So I'll have to see if I can come back and do something about that or see if I can shorten up some cables or do something to try to improve that or if there are other things I should look at. But that looks like that's just capture related noise. It appears I'm stuck on my math coprocessor test. So that to me indicates that somewhere, and I could maybe take this out and see if that helps, uh, but it's not getting through the math coprocessor test. And that typically is my internal bus uh, and uh, something to do with speed uh, not getting there. And I am going to try it without this and just see what happens here. Okay, I'm still stuck on the math coprocessor test, so I need to see if I can address that. And I am going to probably put in these SIPs down here real quick that allow me to either pull up or pull down the bus and see if it is just related to something here or not. Okay, at this point I did make some changes and the things I tried out, I real quickly did put in these pull-up resistors. I just tried out some 3.3Ks pull-ups on address and data lines and that didn't seem to make a, any change whatsoever, so I just pulled those out for now. And with the math coprocessor failing its tests in the past, that was typically related to clock. So I went back and looked at my resistor that I have in line that goes out of my clock generator out to the clock circuit. And I had a 10 ohm in there. And I dropped that down to a 1 ohm and now everything is fine. And I, I do think that at my next revision of this board, I need to change my clock distribution, how I'm doing that. Right now, all clock CLK is being driven off of you know, this single clock generator output. And I think I'm going to need to 
go out of that into something else that will distribute it better. Uh, so there's there's some some there's some suggestions I've received online on how to maybe think about that. So I'll do that in a future version. But for now, I just drop that resistance down. Everything seems good with this one ohm inline resistor for my CLK signal for both the board and that goes all the way over here to the VGA. I'm guessing another thing I could probably do is find that clock line over here and do a little pull up resistor that might also help but this this is taking care of it. And you can see as my system comes up now it says loading and that's where I did want it to stop and right now I just put that loading on a single frame but I can type that's kind of where my cursor is at so I can say hello world and you can just notice hello world is on both frames whereas loading is on just one frame and that's just how I have it programmed right now is the loading was on a single frame and every time I hit a key I write it to both frames so that it persists as I type characters uh, if I hit escape that'll go ahead and clear the screen and so now I'm back up top and I can you know just make sure all of this functionality is working and that all seems great I did add support for function keys too. Uh, F4 does also do a full uh, clear, or sorry, F5 does a full clear of my two uh, VRAM banks and same pretty much as the escape key for now. Uh, F6 does the same thing but fills it with white. And so there you can see the output that I'm getting on that. And when I hook this up to an actual screen, I don't see any of this kind of waviness that you, you're seeing there. So I'm guessing there's a, maybe a grounding or something else I can do to help improve and, and remove some of that waviness. Uh, but that just seems to be noise uh, that I'm picking up as I record this. Uh, if I press F7, that will take me in, clear my memory, and then bring up my basic test and that basic test looks like this and so this is really what I'm looking at you know I'm looking at my reds my greens my blues uh, I'm looking at the movement of the spaceship and it's all looking pretty clean as clean as I would expect it to so uh, let's see if I press F8 then that goes to a different screen I was working on where I'm just drawing some shapes uh, nothing too exciting there, but I can kind of look at it and see that, yeah, those are those are shapes like I'd expect. And then I think F9 was my uh, load an image from my SD card. So right now, this is a longer procedure, but it's going to my SD card and it's fetching an image and it's loading it into memory. And so that takes just a little bit to go through and you'll actually see it cycle through every one of my uh, 64k segments of this active frame basically so this far top LED what you're seeing or the far left one if I'm looking at it uh, you know face on this way that's just showing which frame I'm on and then the next four are showing which segment and it's just cycling through the segments it's reading all that data from SD card to that and I have improved the speed of that a little bit there's more I think I can do to try to pick up the speed of how fast it writes from reads from here and writes it to here but this is just a full bitmap image test so I'm not worried about the speed there yet but I'll want to try to improve that uh, down the road and then that image is loaded and as I look at you know all my colors you know as a reminder you know I changed this when I went to the ladder I now have uh, an R2R ladder and one thing I did forget to put on the schematic which which is basically to allow me to at the outside of the ladder to have a resistor that goes to ground so that I can set the appropriate voltage that I want coming out into my VGA signal and I think I can flip this over and show you this was a post uh, PCB order I just put those three resistors here um, so for these resistors for the R2 our ladder what I went with was 150 ohm and 300 ohms so the the R1 values are 150 and then the R2 values are 300 I did also try it at 75 and 150 and that also worked and then of course those resistors on the back is where I'm trying to drop it down to the right voltage to make sure I get 0.7 volts out of each of these 
And as I understand it, ideally I would go with the 75s and 150s because that would give me a 75 ohm impedance coming out of this. So I'm a little bit higher probably on impedance than I need to be, but it's working well. And as far as the actual color now, um, these are these are 150 and 300 ohm resistors, give or take the 1%. Uh, and so as I look at my color accuracy, you know, this is looking pretty good. This looks better than it did before, before I went to the R2R setup. So I think that the shading going from uh, the different blues to the greens to the reds, all of that seems to be coming through pretty well. And again, the face looks, you know, it's a, it's a picture of an actual person. That's not a, a cartoon type face. And that, that picture seems to be coming through pretty well and skin tones and things like that. So at this point, uh, it seems like, you know, this is working uh, well, and I just have some of this waviness that I can see if I can figure out how to, to get rid of some of that. But the actual output, I don't, I'll have to look at the recording on playback, but I'm not seeing any vertical lines uh, anywhere on my screen. You know, my colors look like they're going from a nice dark to a bright in a nice consistent way. Uh, so I'm going to check this as a, a success at this point, unlike my uh, first version of the PCB. And now I'll start doing some testing and programming and see, you know, what, what can I make this uh, video card do and just learn some assembly to control it better. Uh, but that's what I've got so far. So thanks for watching and more to come. Thank you.